The fire buzz is now rolling. Dean White, Jason Maloney. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Jason, where are you? Where are you in the world? I'm in Las Vegas, mate. I'm in Las Vegas. Been over here for a week and a half now. Wanted to give ourselves a month uh, on the ground in Las Vegas before my fight. So been here, settled in, nice. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, training's going really well, mate. Enjoy my time over here. Your line has just gone really crackly as, as soon as we started. But um, I think we caught all that. You're in Vegas. You're, are you in Sorry, mate, Are you in a bubble yet? Yeah. Well, sort of, mate. They, uh, we want to keep to ourselves. Um, we've got our own private house here. Um, so we don't do too much. We don't want to put ourselves at, at any danger. Obviously, there's a lot of testing which goes on before before I step into the ring and well, yeah, if anything was to happen and you get the get coronavirus and the fight's off, so that's the absolute last thing that we would want to happen. So we're trying to be as safe as possible, really only leave the, the house to go to the gym and um, anyone who enters into the top-ranked gym has to have been tested and COVID-free before they step through the front door. So we, we think we've got things, you know, pretty sorted, pretty safe and um, I can just put the head down, train hard and, and get ready for the biggest fight of my life. Mm, mm, mm. Pe- pe- people who don't know, Dean, we were just saying before we came on, Dean, you're in London, which is South England. I'm in Stockport, no, Manchester, North England. And we're in very different settings, despite only being, I don't know, 100 miles or so away from each other, very different rules with what we can and can't do. We're in a bit of trouble up here. Um, I understand it's a bit more relaxed down there. Is that the same in Vegas, like, or in America, is it different rules for different parts of the country? Uh, I'm not too sure, mate. It's uh, um, Most things seem to be open here. Um, you've got to wear your mask everywhere you go, and some shops, you know, there's only small capacity of people that are allowed into shops or restaurants and things like that. So there is still um, safety measures in place, but I guess you are still able to get around and people still seem to be, I guess, living their life a little bit. They're not in complete lockdown like yourself. So, um, But I don't know hmm. about the rest of America. I mean, Australia, where, where I'm from, um, where I live, we can sort of do most things. But I, where I'm from, I'm from Melbourne originally and all my friends and family are there and they've been, been in lockdown for the last eight weeks. They're like yourself, can't really leave the house can't do anything they can't go with you know outside five kilometer radius of where they live so i think they get about one hour a day where they can leave the house to do some exercise but yeah they're all in lockdown like yourself so it's crazy times mate and um, i'm very fortunate that i've still been able to fly halfway across the world and uh come over to las vegas and, and have the biggest fight of my life and you know keep progressing in my career so very lucky to see being sitting there thinking i'm not in lockdown <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? I've been there and done that. Not interested in that lifestyle. Um, you know, I, you know. I just, to be honest, I kind of just get on and do what I, I need to do. Really, I understand that this, uh, you know, the time we're in COVID and stuff like that. Uh, most people, you just got to kind of be careful, like you say, where we are, where we go. You know, um, I don't wear masks a lot. I do wear them here and there, but I'm around the same group of people. I'm just in the gym training my fighters and obviously having a few meetings here and there. And uh, most places I go, they've got the little temperature gun, so they kind of, you know, test the people when you, you know, wherever you go and stuff like that. Um, I know it's not always the indication because, look, someone like Eddie Hearn didn't have no symptoms, you know, and, uh, and I think Barry Hearn's caught COVID now and I don't believe he had any symptoms. So you can't always tell by saying if someone's got a fever or whatever. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we're past the worst of it, you know, because obviously I know, you know, it's quite different. Early in the year when it was testing, it was a different situation. Now, it's more testing, so obviously they're going to be revealing more cases and they're talking about a spike, but if you're doing more testing, clearly you're going to have more cases, you know, kind of thing. So, I don't know where they're going with that, but I mean, listen, in London, it's, it's pretty lax, it's pretty open. Obviously, that pubs, bars and stuff are closing at 10, which is you know, not too good. You know, as you're just getting started, you're getting rearing. They said, hey, cut, cut, cut. It's a wrap, guys. Let's, you got to go. And that happened, to me, um, that happened to me the other night when I was uh, I was watching um, the boxing on the Sunday and the football. And I couldn't even get to watch the full Boatsy fight. 
and they were like, listen, buddy, you, you don't got to go on, but you got to get the head out of here. Come on, let's go. And like, <laughs> that was, very, that was, I think, when I really realised that it was, you know, this thing is still taking a grip on the world and people and things um, really, really bad, to be honest, because, you know, this whole year, we might as well wipe this whole year off, you know what I mean? And yeah. you've gone back into lockdown and it's kind of terrible. But, you know, you've done the right, I think you've done the right thing, though, going to um, Vegas, you know, a month, probably a month or so out of the fight, because I think we did a similar thing, I think, when we fought in Nebraska. I think we went to Chicago about two weeks early, and then we went to Nebraska. So we was out there about three weeks, you know, to climatize, get um, train around the same time we was going to fight um, and stuff like that. And it's just yeah. always good to set in because Vegas is such a big time difference. Yeah. Um, obviously, from the other side of the world. I don't know what that is. That's some matrix maths. I don't. I can't even equate. It's 24 yeah. hours and then you want to add another nine from there. Bloody yo, you're in, you're back in Tijuana, Mexico. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate it is it's crazy there's a massive time difference so yeah we come over here nice and early adjust the body clock like you said we train at the time we're going to be fighting so yeah we just get everything fine-tuned no distractions as well. so we just put our head down work hard and um get ready give ourselves the best possible chance of winning the fight so get over here early do everything right and uh tick all the boxes yeah it's, have- it's, a, it's a good shot do you have any contact with Naya uh, and his team? Or I guess, do, do your teams cross over? Just, I know usually you wouldn't, but with the corona going on, do you have to, do you have to keep each other up to date with, with the, you, you coming, you're testing negative and everything else? No, not really, mate. Uh, top rank maybe, maybe keep both sides informed a little bit, but um, he's not coming over here until I think two weeks before the fight. So... I know that they were wanting to use the top rank gym as well. Um, and we've already booked in the gym from six to eight. So I think they might want to train from like two to four. So we'll stay away from each other. Um, you know, is what it is. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind seeing him, bumping into him, talking to him, whatever it is. Uh, you know, that sort of thing doesn't bother me bother me one bit. But um yeah, we're uh, we're just worrying about ourselves, mate. Head down, working hard, doing everything right. And, um, yeah, I'm just concerned about myself and bringing my best performance into the ring. Absolutely. Do you know, um, I'm not going to be, I'll be brutally honest, I didn't know much about you. I think I did kind of notice the name uh, a few weeks back. I think I saw, you know, the name, the Monster versus, and I saw the Maloney name, and then I thought of the old Frank Maloney. (laughs) Is it Frank Maloney, the old You know, I I thought of that, and then I and then it just kind of passed me anyway. Um, and then obviously, like, you know, kind of checking up and looking. Um, you know, your lo- was it your last performance? The guy, name begin with B. Uh, the, what's his name? Bayers. Bayers, that yeah, was, the like, last one. yeah. I was, I was pleasantly surprised with, you know what I mean, your shot selection. Um, seems like you can dig a bit. Your record suggests you can dig 18 knockouts. Uh, what yeah. is it, 24, 22? You know, um, but that, that fight, that's probably... I did kind of glimpse a few highlights, but that one I kind of watched. And, uh, you know, I was impressed. I like I like the shot selection put it together. Um, uh, it, 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 it says you've got, is it your, your twin, Andrew, is it? Yeah. Is he yeah, a twin? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, twin. Yeah. He, looks a bit smaller, he looks smaller than you, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's one division smaller than me. So, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I, was thinking, I, was thinking, I was thinking, yeah, he looks a bit smaller. So, um, no, no it's, it's definitely interesting. It's a good fight. You know, you see, obviously, he's very aggressive. You seem you're you know quite aggressive on the front foot, like you know to tee off a bit and so on. But um, yeah. I mean, you know, when I look at the fight, it's funny. I watched the fight with him and Rodriguez, and I watched your one. Obviously, your went to a split decision loss, yeah. and his he stopped him in the second round. Obviously, the monsters. Obviously, everyone knows about his brutal punching power. You yeah. obviously can dig a bit. He gets hit quite a lot. All punchers tend to get hit quite a lot because they believe they're the ones who's going to do the damage and they leave themselves open for counters. And I mean, Donnell was a prime example hitting with some beauties in there in that fight, but he did show a hell of a chin also and Donnell can punch. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of confidence, you've got the confidence watching the Donnell fight and other fights where he was caught. Because even in that Rodriguez fight, it didn't last that long, but he was caught, you know, with some nice body shots and, you know, um, and 
you know, and that's how he actually countered Rodriguez. You know, they, he was opened up and he caught him with, um, I think it was yeah. left initially that started the, yeah. um, the kind of him. But I mean, it, does that give you the confidence because you're saying, well, you know, I can dig as well. And I've seen holes that he allows people opportunity. You know, that's it, is that that's what? It. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like you said, when when you've got a guy who's a big puncher who really backs themselves and they're so aggressive, they leave yeah. opening. There's holes there, and you obviously got to be good enough, and you got to back yourself uh, to to you know exploit those holes and find those openings. But I can bang too, and um, I back myself, yeah. and I'm happy. I'm I'm smart inside the ropes, but I'm also happy to fight fire with fire and. I believe that I can catch him and I can hurt him. And, um, you know, like you said, Don Air showed that he can be hurt. Of course, I knew he showed good heart and a good chin to get through that fight and still come out with a win. But I did think he sort of let him off the hook a little bit. I thought, you know, Don Air's experience maybe thought I'll take my time here, I'll, I'll catch him again and maybe just mm-hmm. let him recover. Um, but, yeah, that won't be happening. We'll catch him. And uh, we won't be letting him off the hook. We'll go in there for the kill. But you know what? Sometimes, you know, you know. Sometimes when you're experienced and you go through fights, sometimes you do, you know, you don't want to rush things because you could you could walk onto a shot also. So you got to bear that in mind. It's normally the educated pressure that gets yeah. it. But obviously, you know, the old fox, the young fox here outfoxed him, and he's got a good movement as well. He, he's actually shot selections. Quite good in the words for, for me, what I'm looking at. And but you know, he is very, very aggressive and he leaves the openings. Um, but you know, if you do get the opportunity, you just gotta be smart, I guess, and um not leave yourself open because you've hurt him rushing on and then you know, like a wild a wild animal, when they're wounded, they lash out. And yeah. uh, some people tend to get their best knockouts in those pre- precise moments there. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. And there, you know, there is that fine line. You know, you don't want to go crazy and walk into a shot because, uh, you know, it, it's dangerous at all times. But, yeah, at the same time, you don't want to give him too much time to recover. Uh, you know, Absolutely. you jump on him. He was in a bad way. And, you know, he fractured his eye socket. He had, I know he said he had double vision and he maybe let him recover and get back into the fight. So uh, that won't be happening here. Uh <laughs> when I've got him hurt, we'll take him out. I was uh, I was reading some interviews of yours, Jason. One in particular with ESPN um, from quite a while back. It has to be said, but you were talking about uh, when you when you move on to these bigger fights, in particular going over to America. When you were talking in that kind of context, I guess in the back of your mind was this the fight that you were kind of referring to? Because let's be honest. It, they don't come much bigger than this. doesn't come any bigger than this. And, yeah, I've, I have been vocal. You know, I'm not the sort of guy that gets online and calls people out and, you know, be a big loud mouth like that. But I have made it pretty vocal that I have always wanted this fight because I want to be the best bantamweight in the world. And the only way to do that is to be the best. And he's rated at number one at the moment. He's holding three belts. So I want my chance... To, to earn that spot, you know, he's where I want to be. So I've given my whole life to this sport. I've made so many sacrifices and worked so hard for so long and it's to be where he is, the number one. And that's why I want this fight because I want to be number one. I believe I've got what it takes to beat him uh, and here's my opportunity. Go out there and do it. I was yeah. looking at the Australian scene. Now, D- Dean mentioned, Dean, Dean kind of touched on this at the, at the beginning there. The Australian scene for myself, maybe Dean probably knows a, a bit more than I do about it, but it's not, it's not been massive over here in recent years. The certain fights have popped up, and um, I think Jeff Horn kind of made a bit of a statement when he got the Pacquiao decision a few years back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, that, that kind of reared its head again a few weeks ago. Jeff Horn fought Tim Sue, didn't he? And, um, yeah. Again, statement made there in, in a different manner. Do you think if that happens, and I know that there's other fighters and Joseph Park is not exactly Australian, but he's, he's in that continent. That sounds like Luke Brown. Yeah, Luke Brown come over and, and, and done things as well. But if you get this win here, you could almost claim to be the face of Australian boxing in the West. If that, is that a fair, fair yeah, suggestion? Definitely. Yeah, mate, this win will go down as one of the best wins by an Australian fighter ever. 
it will have a huge place in our history. And that's what excites me. This is, this is as big as it gets. And, you know, that's what I want. I'll, like you said, boxing's not very big in Australia. Unfortunately, it doesn't get much media. It doesn't have the TV back in behind it. Um, yeah, it's, it's just not where I want it to be. So the, the way to change that is by bringing success. Um, over the years, a lot of guys have done okay, built up a record, but then gone overseas and, and fallen short. So we've got to turn that around. We've got to go overseas, fight on the biggest stage and win and bring success and bring world titles and give everyone, give the whole country someone to follow and something to be excited about. So this is where it all begins. Um, I take out a Nui. I will be the, the face of Australian boxing. And uh, as I said, it will go down as probably the best win by an Australian fighter in our history. Ask, ask a silly question. You you are really confident of this, aren't you? You're not just here I to kind of... I, 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 thinking the same thing all I've heard is KO take him out finish him off yeah. so it's quite easy to you know get the assumption you don't believe this is going to go the distance look I'm always prepared to go 12 rounds and if that's what it takes that's what it takes but as a fighter and the way I prepare yeah I, I like all my fights to finish inside the distance do a proper job yeah. on them leave it take it out of the judges hands yeah, um, absolutely and make a real statement. Um, so obviously that's that's how I would like things to go. I want to knock him out. I want to stop him and, and have no questions asked. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm always prepared to go 12 rounds and I can go 12 rounds flat out. He, he was an, an absolute monster. I mean, excuse the pun. You, you look at that World Boxing Super Series that he was in and he was just incredible. The Donaire fight, however, didn't go the same way as the rest of them went. Do you think he might change his style a little bit off the back of that? Yeah, I'm not sure, mate. I'm not sure. Um, I don't. Everyone wrote Don in, Don Air off and was surprised with how that fight went, but but I wasn't. I think people forget what Don Air's achieved in his career, and I know he was 36 or 37, but he proved he still got a lot left in the tank. And I think people mm. because Don because uh, I knew he was knocking these guys out early, they just thought he was just going to keep walking through everyone, but. He's just a human. He's another man with two arms and two legs, and he can't go in there and just ex- destroy everyone. Um, and when someone got in there like Don Air with the experience and probably the the right attitude, I think some guys get in the ring with a Nui and they've lost the fight before they even step through the ropes, whereas Don Air, having fought the best and been around for so long, went in there with the belief that he can win the fight, which is what I've got. If you don't go in there and believe you can win the fight, then you may as well not even step through those ropes. So when he went in there with someone who believed in themselves and was going in there to win the fight and was willing to take the risk and take the fight to him, well, people thought he was exposed. I don't think he was exposed. I think he still performed well and it was fight of the year in most people's eyes. Um, And although he had some bad moments, he still was able to win the fight uh, quite comfortably. Um, so I don't know if he'll change his approach. I don't think so. I'm expecting and I'm preparing for the very best of Anui. Um, but whether he comes in a different fighter after that experience, time will tell. Not, not that for one second we would suggest you're looking past him, but say we put the position to you, the situation to you, that you've got the win. Um, what guys catch your eye? In, in particular, obviously, we, we're looking at the British shows. Is there anyone... Is there anyone maybe in this weight class in the one above that you think I'd like a crack at him at some point? Well, this will give me three belts and the ultimate goal would, would be to have all five. So the winner of the WBC title, WBC uh, Ubali's fighting Donair in December um, and Casemiro's got the WBO. So I'll be looking to beat both of those guys and, and hold all five belts. That's the ultimate goal. Uh, but no, it's a bit... But the bantamweight division stack. There's plenty of good fights, and um, I make this way comfortably. So I'm here to stay for a while, and um, yeah, once we beat Anui, line them up, and we'll take them all out one by one. Beat Anui and then Donair, you are the face of probably more than just Australian boxing. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a hell of an achievement. 
Yeah, yeah. Very so, don't, don't forget, Cashmere is there lurking, you know, he's a little danger, man, as well. He's, 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 he's so funny, man. What do you call him? Hey, man, he's a little turtle. He's not even a dragon. He, I'm going to say that. He's mad. He is too funny, you know. He's, he's a turtle. He's a Dude, turtle. That was <laughs> funny. I did have a good laugh at that. But, um, you know, he's Annoying. saying that he's, that he's scared. Well, they were the ones that turned the fight down, really. And then we tried to negotiate a fight with them originally and it wasn't happening. So we bypassed them and got the Inui fight. So it all worked out well for me. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of talking going on, but I, I don't know the truth behind it. I think he, he was the one the, that uh, turned the fight down in the end. Do you know what I'll say about that? I don't know much about them, but what I do know is I've been in boxing a, a little while and obviously we've got boxing manager. My bro does this stuff. And, you know, I've been around the scene watching a lot right now because of COVID. Um, I don't know for yourself. But I know he's been in the UK quite. He's, he's fought here a few times, customer, and he's probably got paid pretty good coming here and doing stuff. So a lot of the boys, you know, the money they're being off, offered now because of COVID isn't what they've done. Um, you know, they've got better in the past for lesser opponents. Um, and I was kind of we heard whispers about they wasn't happy with the money they was offered for the new fight. If you are going to fight for more belts. You're going to fight the man they call the monster, the top of the tree. Just like when people fight AJ, they want big money. Yeah. You know, like when you're fighting the top guys, they want big money. In this um, instant here, like I was, uh, Jose, not Jose Burton, Johnson, Callum Johnson, I watched the interview recently with him and he was talking about they offered him a 40% pay cut. Ridiculous. And that's because of COVID. Um, in, so I'm not sure if, he doesn't seem like he's scared of anyone, I don't know him personally, but just see, he seems a bubbly, outgoing person. In, in this instance, I'm looking at it that, you know, yourself, you know, like you said, being where you are, coming from Australia, not the greatest of options. You've got a great opportunity. It's probably, you know, one of your probably biggest paydays fighting for multiple titles in Vegas, etc. So I wouldn't see you overlooking this fight because of A, the opportunity, and you've got such confidence in yourself and desire and purpose, once you've got all that combination, you're just looking at it like, well, listen, this is a chance to, you know, create a massive upset. Maybe not in your eyes an upset, but in the world of boxing upset. You're just saying, listen, money's good. Got a chance to smoke this sucker. <laughs> you know what? I don't care what they're offering me. Let me go down there and show them what business I really mean. You know what I'm trying to say? So you know, it's, it's, it, it's different for different people. So, you know, it's got to be balanced up. Exactly. You're dead right there. And, um, you know, if that was the case, which, I'm, which I believe that's what did happen with the Casemiro thing, they weren't happy with the money. That, that's fine. Say that, you know, uh, yeah, look, the, the offer we got wasn't good enough. Uh, that's why they turned it down. But And he's coming out saying that everyone's running from him, everyone's scared of him. Well, that's not the truth. So let's just tell it how it is. He won't have to with the money. But, um, yeah, like you said, for me, Obviously, everyone wants to get paid. You know, you've only got one short career where you want to get the most out of it. But um, for me, this is all about the opportunity. Winning this fight will change my life forever and open the doors to so many things um, and just turn me into a superstar overnight. Um, so this is all about the opportunity. I win this fight and um, my life will be better forever. Yeah, Absolutely. One, one, one way I have to ask, one thing I have to ask, and it's kind of cliche, especially at the minute, every single fighter has been asked it in every division over the last few months. But I, I think I think there is value in every fighter's answer. I think they all kind of take it a little bit differently. The fact that there's no fans there. I mean, if you if, if you were told six months ago or maybe a bit longer, how before COVID happened, you're going to be fighting um, a new way in Vegas. You th straight away you think, naming lights, huge crowd the, the full experience and it's in a bubble now that's nothing you can do about it I and mean, then it does, doesn't take anything off the challenge in front of you but how does it feel knowing that you could have had a sellout crowd there yeah. is it a little frustrating well I don't know if frustrating is a word it's a little bit disappointing um you know like if you had told me eight months ago like you said you fired an Anui for three of the bouts uh, at the MGM Grand, uh, but there's no crowd. And I would have thought you were joking. That's that's just crazy. <laughs> what are you talking about? But 
it's the times. You've got to just take it, you know, roll with the punches, like as they say. Um, just go with it. Um, it is what it is. There, there might not any, be anyone in the crowd at the fight, but there will be still be millions of people watching on TV. It's still the absolute biggest platform that I've ever performed on. And winning the fight is still going to have, I'm still going to have three belts around my waist. It's still going to change my life forever. It's still going to make me the number one bantamweight in the world. So fans there or not, um, it's still the ultimate opportunity and the ult- ultimate challenge uh, and something that excites me so much. But the fact that I can't have everyone, you know, my friends and family there to be there, cheer me and enjoy the moment, that's disappointing. But you've got to take it, take the good with the bad. Is the ideal night, fans aside, you both meet in the middle of, uh, middle of the ring, few rounds of absolute hell and then you come away with the belts? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Uh, well, it's Halloween that you're fighting, and it's the monster. I'm sure there's plenty of PR teams working on phones yeah. and marketing departments working on posters for that. But uh, yeah. you seem, we've already mentioned it, you seem confident. You have to be confident going into a fight like that. And we could be, Dean, we could be talking right now to the next the next superstar in boxing. Yeah, no doubt. And listen, it's, it's good to have, you know, that calm demeanor, confidence. And I know, you know, as long as you've done everything in training, um, and you look guy in there relax. Obviously, there's no crowd, so we shouldn't. It shouldn't be an overwhelming feeling because it's like you're just in a gym, like when you're going to spar and stuff. And no, you know, there's only a few people there, so you know, it's just trying to embrace it. And like you say, um, take the monster out of the equation, bring the turtle in there, and uh, you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, That's if you exactly win, right. That's exactly yeah, right. yeah, I'm telling Listen, you. If, you, if you get the win. You've got to come back on this show, you know, and show us the belts. Yeah, absolutely. Of course I will. <laughs> I, I always find it's... I always, I, listen, I've worked in boxing a f- fair amount of time, probably not as long as you guys. It always... It always... I always makes an impression when there's such a nice guy and then in the ring it's just an absolute killer, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I love that kind of uh, thing. Anyway, Jason, we'll let you crack on because you are in the middle of Vegas, in the middle of training camp. But um, listen, it's been, a, it's been a treat and all the best for Halloween. Yeah, thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. Thanks for chatting to you guys. And, um, yeah, be more than happy to come back on and show those three belts off after the 31st. <laughs> All right. Look, look forward to it, sir. Good on you, mate. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Cheers, All man. the best. <laughs>